Can you please give uh, 5,000? Um, so the loans that we asked for were 3-0 oh, and the 4-0. Oh. We please have a 3-5. Uh, There has never been a, a, a better time to be a patient uh, with cardiovascular disease. The technological advancements and innovations save lives and, and improve quality of life. Wow, fantastic. I miss that loud heart murmur you used to have. I did too. Radiation exposure is cumulative. In other words, if you catch a cold, uh, you get the cold and it goes away. Radiation exposure doesn't go away. The radiation exposure that I had 30 years ago is still with me. The radiation exposure that I had 30 minutes ago is added on to the exposure I had three decades ago. And so the consequences of radiation exposure, whether it's to the bone marrow, to the brain, orthopedic injury, it's additive, it adds up over time. Forgotten in all of this is the welfare of the nurses and the patient care techs who perform these procedures with the physicians all day long. One of my earliest mentors was a, uh, was a, a great physician named Dr. Ted Dietrich. Ted Dietrich, there are a handful of people um, in the world who changed cardiovascular medicine, changed patient care uh, to the degree that uh, Dr. Dietrich did. I'd had this carotid endorectomy six years before, and I thought that it must be related to a recurrence of the carotid. So when the, when the person picked me up, and said, where do you want to go? Do you want to go back to the heart hospital where they took the, the carotid out? I said, no, I want to go to Barrows because I think I'm having a stroke. And it turned out I didn't have the stroke, I had a brain tumor. As innovative as Dr. Dietrich was, as immortal as Dr. Dietrich uh, seemed to be, he probably died of the consequences of radiation exposure. We have not put adequate emphasis on staff safety, physician safety, nursing safety in the cardiac catheterization laboratory. That has been largely ignored. I've been performing cath lab procedures for, for over 30 years, and I've done well in excess of 10,000 procedures. If it's not a CTO, it's certainly a CSL. So you definitely have nodular calcium there. My, uh, my parents taught us several things. They always emphasized faith, family, and education. Family is uh, the center of my life, and uh, Tracy and I have been married for over 30 years. We have four children, four daughters, uh, who are the love of my life and the reason uh, that I get up in the morning and go to work. They are uh, wonderful and beautiful and uh, high energy. Um, they are absolutely everything to me. I want to have 10 kids and live on a farm. I'm down a for a little road trip to Texas. You'll okay. bring my dog. Yo, you're like the only man I know who's literally surrounded by all women. When you think about family, um, this all of a sudden becomes very real, and there's a certain vulnerability uh, that you begin to uh, that you begin to feel.
the adverse consequences of radiation exposure really consumes me. And over the last four decades, and especially over the last 10 years, there have been equipment enhancements to promote safety and reduce injury to college athletes. Very necessary. However, in the most advanced field of medical science over that same time frame, little has changed in the lab to reduce occupational health hazards. So, what do you guys know about radiation and radiation safety? It's bad. Radiation is bad. I heard uh, some estimates that by the time you've been in the cardiac catheterization laboratory for 20 years, and, and many of us have, you've had the equivalent of 20,000 chest x-rays to the head and neck. Uh, that's, that's an amazing, that's an astounding number. What's up, buddy? So if you check out the room and ask them how many people have had neck surgery or back surgery or knee surgery or hip surgery, probably most of them raise their hand. I spend uh, six or eight cases in the lab. Like I go home, it's like you played a football game. The, the burning topic for me and for the rest of my career is going to be everything we know about radiation and orthopedic injury. Ruptured disc, completely paralyzed right leg, emergent surgery, muscle wasting, foot drop, uh, disc, neck, this is it. Okay, my wife constantly says, stand up straight. I've lost an inch and a half to two inches a night. We spent a long time in training. I, I mean, I, nobody could believe when I started working, all my friends, you know, I finally got a job when I was 34 years old. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was in training yeah. nonstop till I was 34 years old, right? Mm -hmm. So that is, that is just a lot of training, a lot of work. You, it takes a lot of time to get there. Now you want to maximize your career potential, especially now when physicians are sort of in short supply. We need to make it safer for this new generation. What radiation allows us to do is to see inside the patient. In other words, the patient is on the uh, operating room table and using radiation or x-ray, we can see inside their body and it can guide how we move our catheters and how we implant certain devices. Every time we step in here to save a life, we are exposing ourselves to potential harmful effects of ionizing radiation. You know, none of us do this because we want to make money or we want to be famous or we want to be we all do this because it's a passion. So we need to talk about plan B. Okay, so if this device doesn't fit. I've always leaned towards benefiting the patient and I've kind of put uh, my personal risk kind of in the background a little bit. I think that, uh, that you have to really have that um, decision in your own mind in, in terms of how much you're gonna be willing to expose. I mean, you know, our lives are completely disrupted. You get a call at two in the morning for somebody that's sick that has to go in and, and take care of. So that's kind of the responsibility. I kind of look at it as you're, you're a lifeguard and there's so, you're watching and then there's somebody that's dying in front of you in the ocean. I mean, you're gonna say, okay, well maybe I might risk myself to go, go get that person, but you really don't. You think about, I, I have to go save that line. It's remarkable when you're young and, and just starting out uh, in, in the cath lab doing these procedures, you're more focused uh, on getting good at the procedures and, and, and getting good at treating patients. And so you really don't think about radiation exposure in the cardiac catheterization laboratory. It, it's, it's never, it's never uh, discussed. I think it definitely took a back seat during my development, my training. You know, I think that uh, we did not pay attention to. If you're excited about the procedures, you're excited about all these different changes and, that, that were occurring uh, in the in the field of interventional cardiology. And I think radiation was not a priority. Uh, you know, I know myself uh, didn't wear a badge for more time than, than I probably should admit. 
Unfortunately, in training, you're not really taught about radiation other than when you're studying for nuclear medicine boards and, and imaging. But in the cath lab, you really aren't uh, you really aren't taught about where the radiation comes from, what are levels that you can typically get. Uh, you wear your badge, and it's it's being monitored. But many times, uh, honestly, we take our badges off because we know we're going to exceed those limits. And, and our passion is to is to be in the cath lab, and our passion is to do the procedures that we were trained to do. And so we want to we want to stay in there. Unfortunately, we're taking the hit of it. The amount of radiation it, that we're exposed to it, is tough, and there's very good data showing that we are the uh, occupation that is exposed to the highest amount of radiation. The only other occupation that even comes close is people who work in nuclear power plants, and and even those are you know exposed to less than less than half of what we get. Um, the issue with radiation is it's a cumulative effect, but it's also you don't know how your body's going to respond to the radiation. So some people, even very low levels of radiation, can affect their bodies and increase their risk, and other people's bodies are more resistant. Like many of my patients who smoke, some of them smoke all their lives and their arteries look pristine, and other patients smoke for 10 years and their arteries are, are all chewed up and look like, look like 80 year olds. So you just don't know how your body's gonna respond to a, cert, to a certain risk or a certain toxin or a certain disease. And so it's, it's one of those uh, problems that's out there that we know we're getting a cumulative effect but we also get what's called a stochastic effect. A stochastic effect meaning that any radiation is bad and you don't know how your body's gonna to respond to it and the effects of that radiation could come out later in life, even way past the time that you stopped exposing your body to radiation. Radiation is a form of energy, a high energy form of light. When you start to get up into the higher energy levels, such as X-rays and gamma rays, this is when the light radiation becomes more penetrating. When it becomes more penetrating, it has the ability to overcome the energy holding electrons in their orbits around the atom. Once you have an ionization effect, that can lead to a chemical change. And if that chemical change occurs in a critical uh, component, such as your DNA, this then can lead to biological effects. We are all exposed to background radiation on a daily basis. Cosmic rays, ultraviolet, in most cases, if you have just low doses of radiation, the body will repair any damage to, say, the DNA. When you get into higher doses, or when you get into more chronic exposure, meaning on a daily basis, the effects become cumulative. What that means is that the body's mechanism for repairing the cell may not work. This could lead to then to mutations and also to cell death.